Hey everyone, hope you're well, welcome to The Loft. My name's Ben and today I wanted to go over a method that we can use to essentially enter the real estate market as individual investors without a lot of capital. So as I'm sure you're aware, generally to get into the real estate market, you need to be able to buy a house, you need to be able to buy flats, whatever it is you're looking at, you need a large amount of capital to be able to put down, buy that and then start renting it out to make your money. However, there is a, another method of getting into real estate and this is of course, real estate investment trusts also known as REITs. So remember to subscribe, we're about to jump in, have a look at REITs, what they do and how they can help. So a REIT is an investment that allows us as individual investors to go and buy shares in a portfolio of commercial real estate. This is something that generally, traditionally, has been limited to people with larger amounts of wealth that they can actually put down and buy these assets within a company for. However, since REITs have been introduced, a REIT portfolio may include multiple assets. This can be anything from apartment complexes, data centers, hospitals and other healthcare facilities, office buildings, anything that you could potentially sell as real estate, there is probably a REIT for that particular area. So generally you'll find REITs that focus on a specific sector such as hospitals or offices or hotels, but there will be the odd REIT that will have a wider spread of assets in their portfolio and could hold, say, data centers as well as office buildings, for an example. So besides just being a company that buys a lot of real estate, there are a few other things that actually transform a company that has real estate into a formal REIT. And this is a set of criteria that the company must meet in order to be classed as a REIT, which gives them benefits in future. These criteria are at minimum, you as a company have to have at least 75% of your total assets invested in real estate cash or US treasuries. You must derive at least 75% of the gross income from either rents, interests from mortgages and things like that, or real estate sales. You must pay a minimum of 90% of all of your taxable income in the form of shareholder dividends each year, which is quite good for us as investors that would be potentially looking for those dividends. The company must be an entity that is taxable as a corporation. The company must also be managed by a board of directors or trustees, depending how it's set up. They must have at least 100 shareholders after the first year of existence, and they must have no more than 50% of all the shares of the company held by five or fewer individuals. Providing a company meets all of these requirements, they become essentially exempt from paying corporate income taxes on their profits, which helps the company, and due to the requirements for being a REIT, they pay out a large percentage of their profits to us as individual shareholders in the form of a dividend. So because one of the criteria is they have to pay out around 90% of their taxable income in the form of dividends, we can see a large amount of dividends coming into our portfolios as individual investors. So there are a few different types of real estate investment trusts, and I'm not talking about a company that buys data centers over a company that buys healthcare. What I'm on about is the actual way that they make their money from their properties. So the main one and the most common one that you'll come across is the equity REIT, which is essentially a company that buys physical property and then rents that out or buys physical property and rents out sections of it, either data services and things like that. Those are equity REITs because they hold the actual premise itself and then rent it out and that's how they make their money. The other option is a mortgage REIT and a mortgage REIT is essentially more like how normal banks make mortgages what they're doing is they're lending the money for the actual premises and then they're reclaiming it back through interest. The third type is what's called a hybrid REIT. And essentially this is just a combination of both mortgage REITs and equity REITs and they get a bit of benefit from both sides. So now that we know how REITs actually work and how they make their money, let's have a look at how we actually invest into a REIT. And this one is relatively simple and straightforward. For the vast majority of REITs, they will be listed publicly and they will be the same as any other company that you can go and buy. So if you want to buy Tesla, Disney, anything like that, these REITs will be bought the same way. You would go in, you would buy one share for a set amount of money and you would get your distribution given to you through your broker every month, every quarter, depending how they pay it. So I do want to point out that there is a tax difference for the distributions and dividends from REITs which is they are classed as typical income as opposed to split out on taxes as dividends. So this can be a bit of a nightmare for some people because depending how much you earn, you will be paying more tax on these than normal dividends. However, for me personally, this makes literally no difference because I'm investing in an ISA. So 
I don't treat this as tax in any sense of the form. I don't pay my tax on the gains that I get, regardless of whether it's from a REIT or from a normal dividend. Because I'm using an ISA, I don't pay for those taxes. However, if you're not using an ISA as your direct vehicle for essentially avoiding tax where possible, I would make sure that you work out how you have to declare REIT dividends in your area, depending on what the process is. So just in case it's of interest to you, I have included and I have got a brief list here that just lists off a large section of REITs and includes their dividend yield, just in case you're interested. And as you can see, a majority of these are a fair bit higher than the S&P 500, which holds an average of around 1% to 2%. But that is it for today. So if you wanted to check out a video that YouTube thinks that you should watch, I would suggest checking out this video here. As always, do please like, subscribe and share the video as it greatly, 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 greatly helps. And until next time, remember to invest, save and subscribe.